It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat's on assignment. Peter Bright, Dr. Pizza, joins Mary Fo Mary Fojoli. <laughs> we'll be talking about the latest Windows news, some updates on what we can expect with Windows Blue, some more surprises. Uh, we'll talk about the big month of June for Microsoft. Lots of announcements and events coming up. And also a, kind of a look at Google I.O. and Larry Page's speech. What does it really mean? It's all ahead on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 312, recorded May 16th, 2013. Paw Friendly. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create a professional website, blog, portfolio, or online store. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase on new accounts, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code WINDOWS5. And by ShareFile. Enhance your workflow. Send files of almost any size easily and securely with ShareFile from Citrix. Try ShareFile today for a 30-day free trial. Go to ShareFile.com, click the radio microphone, and enter Windows. And by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to Audible.com slash Windows. It's time for Windows Weekly. And uh, we've got a great bunch of... Uh, things to talk about, but Paul Thorat sadly is not here to do it. But Mary Jo Foley is, and she's brought along Dr. Pizza. Peter Bright is with us. Hello, Dr. Pizza. Hey, everyone. Peter writes for ArsTechnica.com. And uh, do you make your home in Houston, but you're visiting London, or you make your home in London and you were visiting Houston? Uh, at the moment, I live in London. My wife lives in Houston, and I am waiting to emigrate. Ah. Got the visa, did you? I go for my embassy interview next month. How exciting for you that Yay. must be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't do you get because you married an American, do you get like uh, some sort of instant uh, pass, free pass into the US? Instant that takes about a year. Yeah. Okay, that's mm -hmm. good. So not, not that instant. Well, we embrace you Dr. Pizza. We embrace <laughs> you and welcome you with open arms. You huddled mass you. <laughs> 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 Mary Jo Foley is the, also the uh, blogger at allaboutmicrosoft.com from ZDNet. Hello to both of you. Uh, mm -hmm. It's actually uh, a little bit sad that Paul's not here because it's a big week for Windows Phone. Mary Jo and I, and I gather Peter too, are all holding our Lumia 928s. Yes. The no, finally, no, no. not you, these are the Verizon CDMA versions of the Lumia. Verizon, Mary Jo, Verizon did have... A Windows phone, but it wasn't a top of the line Windows phone. It's finally right. they have a high end Windows phone. Yep. yep. This is this is their new flagship on Verizon. Yay. Very nice. <laughs> what do you think? Yep. I like it a lot. You're an eight X user? I am. I am. And so it's been interest an interesting week to try both of them and kind of see which one does what better. Gotta say I still like the eight X. Sorry, uh, I know there's tons of Tons of Nokia fans on here, but the 8X is still lighter. Nothing wrong with that. It's what's nope. great is there's choice, and there's I choice know. between I some agree. very nice hardware. Agree. It's great that we have a choice. Really great. Yeah. Um, and yep. if you prefer Nokia, I mean, I, I, what would you say? I mean, in terms, you you like the form factor of the 8X better, but I do. In terms of the interface, this is one thing on Android that is a little annoying is that every Android phone manufacturer and carrier customizes it so heavily that they're virtually indistinguishable. So the HTC One is nothing like a Galaxy S4. Um, yeah. Windows Phone is a little bit more homogenous. Oh, definitely. I mean, you can set, I could have set both of my phones up exactly the same. And it's it's great because as the user, you get to set up the phone the way you want it. Right, right. So that's great. Uh, are, the, are, are there functions that are different? I guess we automatically the Nokia Here Suite is on this, but you could still download yeah. it on your 8X, so that's not... There are little differences. Yeah. Um, like the, the Nokia apps are slightly better on Nokia phones. Oh, are um, they? Yeah, so like um, the Maps app, the, the one that does turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Mm -hmm. Driver. Uh, they, drive. let, they let everyone use that uh, like a couple of months ago I think um, 
But if you have a Nokia phone, you can download the maps for anywhere in the world. If you have a HTC, then you can download the maps for where you live, but not any other country. Oh, interesting. Um, huh. so just little weird little differences like that. That seems odd. Um, I, I, see, I, don't, I haven't used the uh, 928. I don't know if it has it, or you may have to wait till later in the summer. Um, because I tried earlier in the week the 925, which is that Ooh, other... Ooh, that, that's that, the one that, I'm really interested in. Yeah. That's the third flagship phone. Yeah. The, 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 met, the one with a metal band around it. And the ones we were trying have got double tap to wake. So even when they're, um, you know, if you press the power button to turn the screen off, you can just double tap the screen yeah. and it will wake up. Yeah, we don't have that. That's going to be a Nokia feature. Doesn't do a um, thing. But, so <laughs> no. you'll probably get it later this year. Um, yeah. They weren't exactly sure which phones will get it. But like HTC phones won't have that. What do you think of the 925? Mary Jo, have you held a 925? No, I have not. So Peter's um, our sole uh, tester here. What do you think? I mean, is it a unibody aluminum? I thought it was. It's not. It's just a metal it, rim. Well, it, um, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure how it's constructed. So the back is plastic. The front is kind of glass, like on your 928, but it's got a, a metal band running around the, around the edge, which ah. they say is also an, an antenna. Uh, it's an awful lot lighter than the 920. I don't know, I don't know where the 928... The 928 is slightly, like, you know, slight, um, like grams lighter, but it is lighter and yeah. a little bit smaller. It, it, so so the, was... the 925 is noticeably lighter and and a bit thinner as well yeah um so if you're wanting something a bit sleeker than the 920 then the 925 looks pretty good um they also say they've improved the camera they it's got like um so they got the optical image stabilization in the 920 and the 928 um the 925 improves that a bit somehow they're actually it's calling it a smart an camera not a smartphone they it's almost a well, camera yeah. with phone features. Oh, well, <laughs> well that, yeah, that's that's going to be one of their new software features. So it's yeah. going to have lots of trick photography yeah. capabilities, like um, combining multiple shots to like pick the ones where everyone is smiling and not blinking. Um, now that I can, of, I downloaded on on this. That, that's so that's. Do, I, do, I'm gonna, do you have that on? I, yeah, I, I'm on a I, slight I, disadvantage I, because I don't know what to, what was always on there or what's something new on the 928. But on this yeah, camera... Yeah. I, I'm, I'm at a disadvantage because I don't know what's on the 928 because I haven't... Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Uh, on this camera, we have um, these nice filters that you can add. And uh, uh, one of the... Or lenses, I'm sorry, they call them. And yeah. it comes with a few, but one of them uh, is Smart Shoot, which I, I think no, is... I, th I, think, I think Smart... No, I think Smart Shoot is different. The new one will be called, I think, Smart Cam or Smart okay. Camera. This says, create brilliant group shots. Whoops. It uh, it you take the shot and then it takes yeah. the best parts of each face. I, I'm guessing smart camera will probably supersede that. Okay, um, and, and may not be available because uh, on this hardware because it's hardware specific. Um, no, it'll be available for that. Oh. Um, they'll they'll make it available to all of them. All right. Oh yeah, and that's the other thing. The 928, so the one you have, has got the Xenon flash. Yes. The, 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 nine, the, the 925 and the 920 are just little LED flashes. I don't so know if that makes a big difference. Well, Xenon is brighter, right? Or Xenon's brighter. Yeah, it, it's it's. Here, I'll flash flashy. you. Flashy. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does take a really nice low light picture. Yeah. <laughs> does it? Yeah. Yeah, it does. I I took a bunch of surprisingly beer shots this week with this, and they came out quite nice in a darkened bar with a little candle next to it. Yeah. So very nice, nice feature. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, there was a pretty crappy picture I took, but there you are. <laughs> <You're> actually, <laughs> I actually washed you out there, Peter. <laughs> that flash is too bright. Um, you know, I, I want to ask Peter something on the 925, because this, this I thought, thought was a little confusing this week. You know, so Nokia also talked about Amber, right? Which is, I guess, yep. the next, it's it's some of the features from the 925 that'll be ported to other Windows phones. Is that right? Yeah, or I think, what is I think that? that's, that's a fair way of describing it. Um, okay. So... The, the 925 had a newer firmware than is currently available. And that was a mix of newer Windows phone features, so, you know, stuff from Microsoft that's built in, and newer Nokia apps, so stuff like the Double Tap to Wake. 
and I think it. I I I don't think they were completely clear about it. So I think the Amber update is what Nokia is calling the Windows updates plus the Nokia updates. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and will so we I get? Think will I we think get it's that? GDR two plus the Nokia updates. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, GDR yeah. So we should we should get that right. Yeah, like I, if you I have, think so. If you have this phone, yeah. Um, so. Yeah, they, 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 you know, they said explicitly that things like the the smart camera app will be coming to all of their fo- all of their Windows Phone eight phones. Um, Double tap to wake will come to some of them, um, and I, I, you know, I, th- I think we're gonna see uh, the like the FM radio and the built-in operating system features come to everyone as well. Um, but, you know, this this depends on Microsoft getting the updates out, the carriers letting people mm-hmm. install it, and all the all the usual things. Yep. So uh, whether whether that will happen anytime soon is, is anyone's guess. Well, and it's a, it now <laughs> going to be available at some point unlocked in the U.S. Uh, no carrier, or, or no, I guess T-Mobile is going to offer it. T-Mobile is going to have the 925, yeah. um, so there will be three carriers with flagship 900 series phones. Wow. Um, Who's the uh, odd man out? Sprint? Sprint. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's okay, because nobody wants Sprint, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it probably They're supposed to get something, though, right? They'll get they, something. They're supposed to get, a, I think, a Lumia. A, I don't know if it's the highest end device, but something in the next couple months, I heard, so... Windows Phone 8 coming to Sprint too. Yeah. And what's what's really good news is that these 920s, 928s, and 925s are really competitive, I think, with the high-end Android phones that are out now. And, and you know, I, Apple's got to respond because Apple has nothing in this kind of category at this point. Mm-hmm. These, these are gorgeous phones, very powerful. I think the cameras have now caught up with the iPhone camera. That was one area where Apple had a real lead. Um, I think Apple's the pressure's on Apple now to see what they do with their next iPhone this fall. Definitely, yep. yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So, um, IDC says that it is Apple, Android, and Windows Phone. Windows Phone in third place with three percent market share. Yay! Yay! Third place, three percent. We are the three <laughs> percent. <laughs> Is this U.S.? Are these U.S.? I think they they are U.S. numbers. Yeah. Uh, let's see. They're unit shipments. Um, and that means not sell through, but shipped to dealers. It is a pretty significant lead for Android. Uh, seven it is. In, in Q1 of uh, 2013, 75 percent of all shipments. 75 percent. Those are Microsoft numbers, baby. Were uh, Android. 17% were iOS. Windows Phone was 3%, 3.2%, Black BlackBerry 2.9%. Um, that's, uh, that's significant. That's market share. Um, yeah. But three, see, this that, that doesn't jibe, right? Didn't Microsoft said they sold 10 million Windows Phone units or something like that? Uh, yeah, these three, numbers are hard to figure out, right? Yeah. I know. <laughs> this is just Q1 2013. Um, so it's not cumulative. It, that, okay. We're just looking at those numbers now. Okay. All right. Yeah. But change year over year, Windows Phone up 133%. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's the uh, the official Frank X. Shaw of stat of the week. <laughs> <laughs> we should yes, have a feature indeed. on this show. <laughs> <laughs> the Frank Shaw feature. Frank Shaw indeed. feature. Uh, the Frank Shaw number of the week, 130% growth in yes. Windows Phone. Wow. Wow. That's more than double year over year. <laughs> Wowee. <laughs> yep. Yeah, what, what, I'm, what I'm curious about, though, is um, what I think, because the phone, Windows Phone is selling actually quite well in like some parts of Europe, for example. Um so I, I'm wondering if Microsoft will be left with the, the situation that actually is, is the same situation that Nokia is in, or was traditionally in, where they sell well to a bunch of audiences around the world, but not in the US. Now, for Nokia, that was always all right, because they were you know a European company, so it, it kind of didn't matter that they weren't big in the US. But what would Microsoft do if they like stuck at like 
three percent in the U.S. Right. and up to sort of ten or fifteen percent in the in 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 other countries. I think I think that might be awkward for them because um, they still the U.S. is still their primary market. It's still the one they they yeah. support the best. It, you know, Americans get the features first, like the podcasts and all the other features that that have people um, annoyed with with Windows Phone eight. Um, I think they might have to start taking other countries a little bit more seriously. Well, they uh, are. I mean, they're making carrier deals, Nokia. This is the first time they've made carrier deals in a while, right, uh, in the U.S. It, they were selling unlocked uh, phones into the U.S. market for years, which is one of the reasons why they lost market share for so long. So at least they're doing that. They're, they now have yep, deals with, the, the, with three carriers. The, 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 the carriers are definitely showing some interest, um, yeah. This so, is a phone, I, I mean, I really seriously think this is a phone you could go into a, a Verizon store and that they would happily show you. I would hope they would. I don't know what people's experience has been. Yeah, yeah it, I think, it's I think. getting better. <laughs> it, 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 you know, it feels less kludgy than the Galaxy S4. Uh, it's a cleaner, kind of a cleaner feel to it. It feels like it was designed in and out thoroughly. Um, yeah, and, and I think they've, they've actually all the, the Nokia Windows phones have had that feel to them. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't used the S4. I cannot stand the S3, and I do not understand. Well, you won't like the S4. Then. <laughs> you really won't. Yeah, I, 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 I suspect that is true. The S4 is yeah. the S3 with more of the things that you hated in the S3, yeah. basically. Yeah, I, I suspect so. <laughs> um, the HTC One uh, is nice, too. Um, yes, it is. It's it's actually a really nice piece of hardware. E yeah. Even the even HTC's weird custom user interface. It's nicer, but it, but once okay. you really spend some time with it, it gets a little right. um, uh, annoying, yeah. intrusive. I, I I can believe that. Yeah. But it's I don't instantly react to it and think, oh my god, that's horrible. How do I get rid of it? Right. Which yeah. you would absolutely do on the Galaxy S4, which is which is why Google's announcement that they were going to sell a, a pure Google Experience Galaxy S4 met with such cheers until they yes. yesterday until at the Google said I, how much it cost. until they mentioned it was six hundred forty nine dollars <laughs> yeah. and then the cheers suddenly weirdly like, stopped. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll stick with TouchWiz. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's a that's a that's a fairly expensive. Um, uh, let's see what else here. You were so you were at the Nokia 925 announcement. Any did, yeah. any insights there, Doctor Pizza? And that's one nice thing about having a, a, our man in London. Okay. Um, no, I mean it was it was kind of a a, a big event for what they launched. Because um, this is this is the awkward spot they're in. Uh, it seems like a nice phone, and the size I think will appeal to a lot of people, particularly people who thought the 920 was too big. But at its core. It's the same as the 920. Yeah. Better screen and some camera improvement, but same processor, basically the same software. It's um, a lot lighter, though, isn't it? Please say yes. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. It <laughs> because is, this is, is a heavy-ass phone. In fact, even the, nine, heavy even the 928, it's, it's, when I picked it up... Like, is... It's like it's like 130-something grams, I think, and it it feels feather, feather light compared yeah. to the, the 920. Yeah. Um, so you know, it, it'll definitely appeal to people, particularly the ones who thought, "Well, I like the 920, but um, but it's it's not a brand new phone. Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's a bit new and a bit old. Silver only, right? There are three colors. Well, there's snap-on like backs, though, right? They're gray not, yeah. and black. Yeah. And then you have. So this is this is one of the things that's a bit weird about it. Although the the back of the nine two five is plastic, um, it's polycarbonate like the the others. It doesn't have built in wireless charging. So if you want to have wireless charging, you get a, you'll have to get a snap on back, uh -huh. which makes is that it because thicker. it's metal. Is that why? No, well, no, because the back is plastic anyway. So oh, hmm. they just one would save money it would on work. that or something. Um, so so with the covers, it's still lighter than the nine twenty. But it is about as thick as the the nine twenty, so that's kind of it's. It, that was a bit of a head scratcher. We weren't really sure why that why they'd done that. Does, um, it, does that does that that chi uh, charging add a considerable amount? I guess it would to the thickness. No, I mean well because the the coils themselves, people have like ripped the coils out of things to. Uh, I see I've seen people doing crazy things like taking the, the charging coil out of a. Uh, 
ripping it out of a palm pre and like <laughs> shoehorning it into uh, like a, a Lumia 800 or something, uh, which is which is insane. But apparently it works. Um, but no, they're 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 actually really sort of flat, thin little things. So it's it's not a, it's not adding a huge amount of thickness. Um, hmm. But it does it does give people the option of of having some color. Yeah. So it's mm-hmm. it's it's nice for that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I, I'm glad. I mean, I'm glad Nokia is uh, is dedicated. Now, I remember Paul saying last week that he was really hoping that Nokia event would announce a tablet, a seven inch yeah. or age tablet. No, no sign of that. No sight of that. Peter, did you did you press uh, the Nokia people? Did you press we, them to the wall no. and say, "Tell we, us"? No. <laughs> no. Um, you know, I I, I I'm I Dr. Think, Pizza. Uh, you must tell me. I I, I think if they disclose anything like that. Um, then Microsoft would send its its Waged representatives to hunt them down and actually really? be murdered. Wouldn't wouldn't uh, Microsoft be thrilled that somebody else is making an RT tablet? Mm, yeah. They might, but they don't want people to spill the beans on the eight inch tablet stuff. Ah, so you? Th- mm. I get it. So it's a operating system modification that Microsoft has not yet announced, and I so think, they cannot. Yeah. Announce hardware until Microsoft says okay. Yeah. yeah, they should have shown it though, just like in passing, you know. Yeah, like we just got, yeah, just have it be on a table, just kind of lying there. exactly, insouciantly lying there, waiting. Well, no, what, 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 the, what they should have done is have it in like in, in like some video or something that they showed, and just have like yeah. a couple of frames where you can just see this thing sitting on a table or something. Because <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. you know that you Whoops. know that there will be the 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 obsessives who sort of go oh, through these it. things oh, on yeah, YouTube yeah. and oh, find oh, it. Yeah. And they'll find it, and then there'll be oh, yeah. lots of like posts, of, <laughs> lots of speculation about what it is. And oh yeah, that, or under a little is. drape, you know, like Sony, like you can tell it's under there, but yeah, you don't really know. <laughs> and, and you, know, you know, people will be sort of measuring things and like drawing little rulers on the screen so they exactly. can prove that it's eight inches and not t- not ten inches. Um, yep. But yeah, that, that's what I would have done. But. You know, I, I wanted to ask Dr. Pizza on something else about this launch because I saw a picture of you, Dr. Pizza, at this <laughs> 925 launch using a Surface RT mm. as your yeah. as your machine. What? How did it go? So, so this has it... been uh, an exciting experiment for a few days. Um, it, it's it's very unusual. I've been out of the office. Well, I say office, my my home office, three days back to back this week. First at Nokia, and then I've been in court the past couple of days. Oh, dear. Uh, we're reporting on a court oh. case, not oh. not up before a judge. No, I okay. haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I haven't been in court doing anything Doc, wrong anyway. Dr. Larson. Um, <laughs> and my my trusty ThinkPad is knackered. That's, you know, the, the technical terminology. <laughs> and I needed a portable machine, so I've been using this Surface RT and you know what? It's been all the things that I knew were good are, are really good, like the the Windows 8 multitasking, like being able to stick Twitter in a column. Brilliant! It's <laughs> it's the best thing, and it makes the iPad look like some child's toy. Uh so I love that. But then the uh, the the downside is this goddamn kickstand. Yeah. Um, it's the wrong angle. It, it's the it's the wrong angle. It didn't work at all well on my lap. Uh, at one yeah. point, I was tight. You can't sort of use the kickstand on, on your lap. lap. <laughs> what are you? It's, what are you insane? Um, no, it's it's ridiculous. <laughs> and you know, they had these little tables um, on our chairs, like we were sort of at school, so we could actually write um, when we were watching the event. And I put my Surface on there, and I was typing, and it was okay. And then I nudged it back just ever so slightly and whoomp it fell on the floor because the big band <laughs> oh. fell off the back of the little table and it was like oh no but for, it was fine it's, it's pretty tough I, I it it worked I broke mine that um, way be warned uh, yeah, yeah I, I I was surprised it still worked yeah so it's like <sighs> I heard you use notepad my favorite word I process. did I did I think, I think you'd be very impressed with it you made um, Mary Jo very happy I was like <laughs> yes <laughs> Because there's something of a of a shortage of software on Windows RT, I was using a notepad, <laughs> um, 
And, and it worked just fine, yeah, didn't it? Notepad, notepad works. Um, some people told me I should use OneNote, but I, I, when I'm writing HTML, which I have to do for our CMS, then I think Notepad is, is better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it left me thinking I want a, a, an actual laptop. And, you know, I want Microsoft to build a laptop because, yeah. like I say, it, it survived being falling off the table and being dropped. It survived that really well. An RT laptop uh, or a Windows 8 laptop? Well, you know, it, it, let's be realistic. I want software. I, I want to be able to run software. So it would have to be Windows 8. You're insane, man. <laughs> Don't you know the future is software free? <laughs> I know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's why I have a Google Pixel. My God, this thing is so great. They they won't let you run software. It is a beautiful <laughs> paperweight. <laughs> they won't let you run software. But it does understand the Konami code. So if you go up, up, yeah. down, down, left, right, yeah, yeah. left, right. Yeah, it's wonderful. It, 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 it's, 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 the, the Chrome Pixel is a beautiful piece of hardware. If I could run Windows on one, then I would probably get one. Because mm. Windows 8 on that would be beautiful. Yeah, any good touch uh, operating system would be, yeah. be cool. You see, that, yeah. that's one of the things they've got so right. I, the, the, the touchpad on the, on the Surface NT, I'm using the type cover. The type cover is a great keyboard. Yes, it's agree. A, Not touch, I type. Almost, I almost, oh, sorry, type cover, yes. Yeah. No, you said it right. I just wanted to I, sorry, underscore yeah, that, cover, that people shouldn't the type get fooled. Cover, the type cover is a fantastic keyboard. Um. It is also one of the worst touchpads I've ever used. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know what? Reaching up to the screen and, and flipping around and tapping on links and that kind of thing, it actually works. It works well. Uh, the, the whole idea of, of using the touchpad for some things and the touchscreen for some things, it's great. I, they're, they're totally right about that. And even if Apple doesn't merge, you know, if it keeps Mac OS and iOS completely separate, it needs to have touchscreen Macs just so you can do things like scrolling and, and like tapping on the dock and things like that. They need to do that because it's 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 fantastic. I'm totally with you. In fact, it's just you and me in the entire world. But mm -hmm. I really like a laptop with touch. I use it all the time. And it's a hybrid use. I understand you may want to use the right. mouse sometimes, the keyboard sometimes, but there are times when it's just very natural to reach out and touch something. And it's weird. I don't find myself wanting to do it on my desktop, probably because the ergonomics are different. You know, right, my screen's right. a bit further away and I'd have to reach up and it wouldn't be as convenient. But when I'm using like a, a laptop type machine, it, it's really fantastic. And, and they, uh, they, they're pushing the right thing. The Microsoft, is, is, their vision is right. I think some bit, bits of the implementation are wonky as hell. But the the ambition, the goal they have is um, really bang on, and so yeah, using the Surface RT was was interesting. Um, but yeah, if, if they made a laptop like this, I would be overjoyed. Peter Bright from Ars Technica is uh, joining us, filling in for Paul Thorat. Mary Jo Foley is here. More to come on uh, Windows Phone. Um, there's some uh, new information about GDR2. Um, we should mention the 928 is available for forty nine ninety nine at Radio Shack, and is and twenty nine ninety nine at Newegg. Really? Yeah. Now that means a new Verizon contract, or can I upgrade both? It? Both. New contract That's or renewal? That's very aggressive. That's really How much aggressive. A month? Oh, it's probably eighty or ninety dollars a month. Probably. So, That's uh, not bad, is it? Really, it's you know, T-Mobile is one of the few that's offering you know kind of lower cost all you can eat plans, but yep. uh, but generally on Verizon you're talking eighty or ninety bucks a month, yep. maybe even a little more. Um, I who's underwriting that? Must be Microsoft, not Verizon. Yeah, it could be Verizon. Really? Mm -hmm. I don't what know. What would their percentage be in that? I know, right? <laughs> Why would they do? It's got to be Microsoft saying, "Hey guys, we'll we'll give you a rebate." Yeah, but the the thing is, you, the thing that you have to remember is providing your phone service costs them basically phone service costs them basically nothing because th they've already bought that hardware. They've yeah. got radio masts all over the, the the country. They've paid for that, so they they yeah. can afford huge subsidies on the phones. 
So I, 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 I But why I would, expect that, would they give you such a big subsidy on this phone compared to, say, some other phone? Uh, maybe it doesn't cost them that much. Yeah, maybe maybe it's a less uh, expensive phone. Yeah, I mean, I because I, it. I mean, it, it's it's less a hardware than something like the the Galaxy S4. So it's gonna. I guess, so. I guess so. Cost less. Man, I mean, um, Google's six forty nine and the Galaxy S4 kind of gives you some idea of what the actual hardware right. cost must so, be. So so Google aren't probably making money off that, but I don't think they're taking a loss on it. So it's probably that's how much roughly six, yeah. Samsung is is yeah. charging them. Yeah. I paid eight hundred so, for an unlocked uh, phone from the UK, from the company in the UK called Expanses for an unlocked yeah, GS four. That, that's that's that sounds about yeah, right. Yeah, and that's a premium. Uh, They're making money. I can promise. Oh you. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are making money because they they somehow get these unlocked phones that right other people before have. everybody else. Um, but think about it. One hundred fifty bucks is about right. Um, yeah. Their profit. Uh, so six fifty. I think that's probably the cost of the phone. Well, how much do you think a, a Lumia nine twenty eight costs Verizon? 500 400 yeah i could i could i could see Good question on that yeah they're selling it unlocked verizon selling the 928 unlocked for 500 dollars. so that must be their cost must or be a little bit yeah. a little bit over their cost yeah yeah interesting okay that is cheaper so you know so they so they can afford the, the subsidy, yeah I yeah think. yeah they sell the ativ for 9.99 <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure they have it's worth <laughs> every penny. <laughs> flying shells. Yeah, yeah. The nine twenty eight at uh, Newegg is thirty bucks. That is, I tell you, you know that if somebody, uh, I mean, I would not recommend some of the thirty dollar Android devices out there. They're crap. Uh, yeah. If you're not willing to spend, you know, the two hundred dollars that most of these companies are, or one hundred fifty bucks that most of these companies are demanding for a, a high end uh, phone, then maybe you should really be looking at the uh, Windows Phone. This is a very, this is a Really quality handset. Yeah, really yeah, it's, well made. It's 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 not necessarily the most high end, but it's quality. It's quality through and through. The camera's excellent. The build is very good. Um, I don't think you'd at any point feel like you know. Gee, I I think in some ways the buttons, the way the buttons are handled, is better. Um, I don't think uh, you know it feels more sealed. Yeah. Um, and this must be. This must be a. Um, uh, world band because it has a SIM in it. So uh, yep. Verizon does that with the iPhone too. They sell it, the, the iPhone yeah. as well. They sell it uh, as, uh, and yeah, I don't know, I'm curious if it's an cool. unlocked SIM. That, that would be really, then I would be, this would be the ultimate world phone. So, yeah. Anyway, boy, that's a great price. Twenty nine ninety nine at Newegg. I did not say Egghead. That would have been the third week in a row. <laughs> 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 They're, the chat room saying something must be wrong with Leo. He's not calling them egghead. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, Google. Google I.O. yesterday, we certainly gave it a lot of coverage. We had a record number of people watching our live coverage, well over 200,000 people watching simultaneously. That shows the interest in Google. Um, and they said, and Larry Page said some things that are, uh, in hindsight, people are getting a little bit funny about, it, particularly because of, the latest news between Google and, uh, my, and uh, Microsoft. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Peter Bright, Mary Jo Foley from AllAboutMicrosoft.com. Our show today brought to you by our good friends at Squarespace, the best place to start your next website. If you are uh, on a hosting company that uh, maybe isn't giving you all you think you deserve, if you're not getting the best software, the best content management, the best templates, the best looks, the best responsiveness, if you're paying more, than the very reasonable $24 or $16 a month that uh, Squarespace charges. You've got to look at the amazing offerings at squarespace.com. This is hosting plus really great content management software. And because it's tightly integrated, uh, you get absolutely, and, you're, and more importantly, your visitors get absolutely the best experience. Some great templates. And the Squarespace is always improving this, by the way. New templates out all the time. There's a new one, a full bleed template called Momentum that is just gorgeous for a photographer or an artist. Um, but remember, when you look at these templates, this is just a starting point. This is this is just what it looks like uncustomized, and the customization is phenomenal. That's why when you go to Squarespace, they'll show you example sites. Use this is all using the Momentum template. The full bleed on this on the front page is great for a photographer. Just really, really gorgeous. A, a great whale. This is a somebody who actually uh, has a site. 
Um, uh, so I, I just I have to tell you, uh, you got to check it out. If you go to squarespace.com, uh, you could try it free, absolutely free for two weeks. You'll get to choose. You start with choosing your your template. Uh, now, one of the nice things about these is they are uh, always mobile responsive. So whether you're viewing it on a an iPhone, a Windows phone, or a, a Pix, what is it, Pixel Perfect, hundred eight inch display, eighty inch display, it's going to look great. It'll automatically rearrange itself, resize to uh, to match the display. Play with it. You can, they have importers that will let, get all your content from your existing site if you have one in there. Uh, and out, by the way. You're never, ever trapped at a Squarespace site. It's very easy to move in and out. And if you decide after a couple of weeks, hey, I like this. It's like, by the way, it's a great gift to go and design a site for somebody. Maybe somebody's having a baby or a wedding. And give it to them. Give them the keys. Say, hey, here's the site. No charge. And Squarespace is going to give them a great price. When you buy an annual plan, $8 for the basic plan. Don't even think about that. Look at the unlimited plan. $16 a month when you buy an annual plan gives you unlimited pages, unlimited galleries, unlimited blogs, unlimited bandwidth. That's so important. You'll never get a bandwidth bill because you suddenly got popular. Unlimited storage and contributors. The website's, of course, mobile. It's automatically, everything Squarespace does automatically fits on any size screen. It comes with all the new features, and whenever a new feature is added, because it's hosting plus the software, you automatically get it. Like the new calendar feature, the events collection that allows you to share scheduled updates for sports teams or bands. This is so great. You also, when you buy an annual plan, get a free custom domain name, which they'll automatically hook up in the .com, .org, .net, .mobi, .biz, or .info space. That's a very important thing. Great customer support and training, too. They have free webinars and excellent forums. If you are thinking about selling something, whether it would be an ebook or a physical book, an MP3 or a CD, T-shirts or designs, you should look at the business plan, $24 a month, with fully integrated e-commerce, unlimited physical and digital products, a mobile store, inventory tracking is built in. Tax calculators built in. They'll do. They help you with shipping and coupon controls, and they don't take a cut. <laughs> you know, they, they'll now they'll help you set you up with a merchant account. Of course, credit card companies take their cut, but the Squarespace twenty four bucks a month is it for everything billed annually. If you want to go month to month, thirty dollars. But I would go annually because we have a special deal: ten percent off your first purchase when you're creating a new account. Use the offer code Windows Five. So. That makes it even more affordable. I have to say, this is such a great place. When you're ready to start your site or your web store, or you want to check it out, squarespace.com. Use our offer code WINDOWS5 for 10% off on new accounts. And we thank Squarespace so much for their support of our uh, our program. Windows Weekly is on the air. Peter Bright filling in for Paul Therotten. Did you guys, uh, Mary Jo Foley, did you guys uh, watch the Google I.O.? Did you uh, Were you at all interested in what was going on there? Yeah, I was watching some of the live blogs and the tweets as they were going by. I thought, you know, it, it was to me this was kind of a watershed uh, keynote, three and a half hours, <laughs> more like a waterfall. Yep. But uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, it was, um, I think Google almost taking the world stage and saying, "Hey, look, this is this is the edifice." You've seen this, you, you know, we've been working on this foundation for years. You're, it's starting to tar start to take shape. And then Larry Page comes out. We well, haven't heard from him in a long time because of his vocal cord paralysis and answers questions and and also states a vision, which some cynics, <laughs> and I include myself among them, uh, uh, kind of took umber took uh, issue with <laughs> that, you know, what's with all this negativity? Why are, you know, this is not a zero-sum game. We can all create great, wonderful new things. We're trying to change the world here, so stop bugging us, man. <laughs> and... Uh, the first thing that leapt to mind in my mind was, uh, well, you do anti-competitive things all the time. <laughs> Turning off EAS. That's anti-competitive. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's an anti-Microsoft <laughs> move. A, and then John Gruber made an excellent point. What's all this about new products? Google Plus is just a Facebook imitation. Yeah. Uh, Gmail, that's webmail. You just did a better, it's a great one, but it's just a better webmail. Um, search, well, they weren't the first to do search. In fact, it doesn't look like they're really... Except for our self-driving cars, <laughs> there's not a lot of like, wow, nobody's ever done this before innovation out there. Yeah. Uh, I love Google, and I think they do great stuff, and I'm uh, thrilled. I, I use Android phones, but um, 
I think Microsoft particularly might take issue with some of the things Larry said. <laughs> Yeah, I would think so, too. <laughs> and, even, and, and even as Larry is on stage doing that, Google's pulling the Windows Phone YouTube app. Yeah. Now, in this case, okay. I think they might have been justified. <laughs> what, what happened there? Yeah, let, let me give the blow-by-blow blow on this, because the timing of this is what, to me, makes this really interesting. So right at the end of the Google keynote yesterday, Microsoft's comp uh, uh, it comes to light on, on The Verge and on Wired that Microsoft has been served with a cease and desist from Google, dated yesterday also, uh, about the YouTube, the Windows Phone YouTube app that Microsoft built. And Google's claiming Microsoft violated the terms of service, which they did. The terms of service are that uh, you must display ads um, and you also cannot allow for video downloads. So Microsoft's response is, well, we would have incorporated those things if Google had given us access to the API, but they didn't. What? Oh. So, hmm. um, yeah, but what, what, what I really feel like this was, and I know a number of people disagree, um, I don't know if Dr. Pizza does or not, but I feel like this was a very well laid trap by Microsoft for Google and Google <laughs> fell right into it. <laughs> well, I wouldn't put it past Microsoft, the kings of the no. Scroogle. Right. And I think this is part of the whole Scroogle thing. And I'm not blaming Microsoft because they're, they're highlighting the fact that Google won't give them the access to this API, allowing them to do the same kind of a YouTube so app. Microsoft but. used Google's mobile YouTube to, right. in effect, to supply their app, which has no ads. They didn't have the API, so that was the only way they could do it. Right. Uh, although the mobile site also does not display ads. Right. right? So, so that's yeah. why. Right. There's no ads. You don't give us an API. What are we going to do? We're going to pull from the mobile yeah. site. And yeah. there's no yeah. ads there because you don't serve them. Exactly. Yeah. The, other, the other interesting part to me, though, is when uh, Microsoft, I think it, Microsoft built the uh, YouTube app for Xbox in conjunction with Google. And that does serve ads. The Xbox yeah. YouTube app serves, serves up ads. So no, Microsoft no, knew not quite the clear terms who of built service. that or who is yeah, responsible for that. I know. It wasn't that clear who well, built Well, now I'm thinking that. it was Google yeah. because uh, if... Microsoft did it, then they obviously have access yeah. to the API. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's very puzzling. Right. But what do you say, Dr. Pizza? Trap or no trap? Yeah, I think I think Microsoft knew what would happen. Um, Me too. And, and they I, knew the timing was perfect. It was. <laughs> well, the, the, the ti I think the timing was just fortuitous because they, they released the app last week um, and then the, the letter was yesterday. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think they... I think they knew that Google would complain, and I think they knew that their defense, you know, we'd love to serve your ads, but you don't give us an API. That's quite a, you know, it's it's an appealing offense, uh, defense. It's it's it like it's your you know, fault. We, we we've done everything we can. Yes. It's now up to you to to give us the bits we need. More complex and than that, though, huh? Yeah, you know, I don't think Google actually gives a damn about the ads because if they did, then they'd serve them on the mobile site, which they don't. Um, you know, if I if if you visit m.youtube.com, you don't get the pre-roll ads on videos that should have pre-roll ads. So Google isn't actually that concerned that Microsoft is depriving them of ad revenue because if they were, then the old YouTube solution for Windows Phone would also have ads. So, I mean, you know, in, in, in the first iPhone, uh, Apple wrote a YouTube app, mm. which Google, Google allowed. Um, then uh, Apple killed that app in the most recent version of iOS, so Google quickly wrote a YouTube app. Yeah. But there's a lot of iPhones out there, and of course it's important that there be YouTube on there. There isn't a YouTube on Roku right now for instance, and I think that that's a problem for both YouTube and Roku. Um, uh, clearly, Google decided not to make a YouTube app for Windows Phone. Right. right. And Microsoft because, because thought the, they ought that to have the one. Only, that is the only thing that is keeping Android Ascendant over Windows Phone. YouTube apps. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> like YouTube apps. With that, without the right. YouTube app, it's hopeless. <laughs> Right, you know that that seventy five percent market share. I might point out overnight. I might point happen. out that uh, Microsoft now isn't shipping uh, Microsoft Office for an iPad until next year, and Bill Gates on sixty Minutes says, you know, people don't like the iPad because there's no Windows, uh, there's no Office, yeah. and well, it's like know, so. This is going on. These to, to, be, to, be, to be fair, that's that's not a product that exists yet. Right. That that's yeah. just rumor. 
Okay. Right. Whereas, right. you know, it's a product that doesn't exist for whatever reason because nobody yeah, right. wrote it. <laughs> so there's a. <laughs> I think you could make a strong case that Microsoft is not in Microsoft's interest that there be window uh, Microsoft Office on uh, an iPad. Yeah. I think and it so exists. they didn't rush to it write one, or if they have one, then they didn't rush to release it. Right. So, yeah. so everybody I mean, acts this way. I guess. I guess what true. my reaction to Larry Page is that's a little disingenuous. I think he's sincere, <laughs> by the way. I think he does like, he would like this world where nobody sues anybody. Um, you know, it, uh, no, Apple doesn't get mad at them for copying the iPhone. Uh, lets yeah, because that, that would work out really well for Google because <laughs> Google is always doing yeah. that well in the lawsuits. Right. Um, yeah. so I'm, I, I can I, understand. I, I think he's sincere in that. He doesn't want that. Google Island with his James Bond lair where yeah. there are no laws and he is king. I, I can totally believe that. I don't think it's a good idea, though. Uh, well, I think competition is not a bad thing for innovation, um, for one thing. Uh, I think everybody is trying to make great new products. I don't think there's any question about that. Um, and I think they're also, I don't disagree with them, there's an awful lot of negativity that doesn't need to be there. Yeah. yeah but is negativity a bad thing? Do you, do you, well, do you I think, think that, he's probably thinking about things like Scroogled. Well, yeah, but I, you see, I'm thinking about things like the Nexus Q, which was one of the, <laughs> the big innovations of, of I.O. last year. And what's happened to that? Well, there was quite a lot of negativity because it was, yeah, this is, again, I want to be on not safe for work because I want to swear. The, the, <laughs> the Nexus Q was a really bad idea and just an all-round dumb product. Yeah. And, you know, people were negative about it, and I don't think that was a bad thing. I think it's probably saved Google some money to, to kill it in the crib. Well, and that's what kind of I'm sitting there thinking, well, I'm kind of negative about lots of things that they do. But I think that's called being critical, you know, critical right. thinking. That's called – and my job is not to um, make nice for uh, Google, nor is it your job to make nice for Microsoft. Right. Our job is to make sure companies give users – we represent users, not companies. And, and you know, if, if everything is awesome, and if we say everything is awesome, what it, what motivation is there to make anything better? True. Well, if everything were awesome, I would say it. Fortunately, we're not even close. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and and you know, if if Google were actually opening up every API and making it freely available to everyone, um, then yeah, okay, then they could say, "See, do what we're doing." But that's not what they're doing, right? right? I mean, they they criticize Microsoft for Microsoft building uh, Google Talk integration into Outlook.com using their own APIs that Google made available. And they said, you know, wow, they took advantage of what we're making available. Well, you made them available. So why is that taking that's advantage, that's, right? That's, like <laughs> that's why you have APIs. Right. I know. So that people can use them and do stuff. Right. So I feel like if Larry Page were being genuine and really saying what he was doing you know, really doing what he was saying, then I think, yeah, okay, stop the negativity. But they're, you know, both Microsoft and Google are doing backhanded things. You know, it's just the way. That, it's the way of tech. Yeah, yeah. and it's not our job to yeah. say, let's not be negative. <laughs> let's look on the bright side. <laughs> in fact, in fact, sometimes if there's a flaw in the tech press, it's that uh, there are people like Robert Scoble who just love everything. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I don't think that's useful for anybody, including Google, Microsoft, Apple. Mm -hmm. you, just as you point <laughs> out, if people didn't say the queue was a piece of crap, nobody, Google, uh, might. Google might have actually released it. We saved yeah. them a lot of money. <laughs> Although it was so apparently bad. I, when they announced it last year, Google I.O., I said, no one, is, that's what? That's, at that price? <laughs> no, that's yeah. crazy. That? Yeah. That's yeah, that, crazy. that one was like, how did this get this far? Yeah, but I did enjoy it because Scoble, I don't know how, but he got right to the microphone when Larry Page took questions. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking Scoble was camping there since the night before. He Probably. was right in the front of the line. And uh, and uh, he said, you know, I'm one of the first, I'm a glass pioneer. And uh, Larry said, yeah, I, I saw that picture of you in the shower. And he did not seem, Larry was not. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> it seemed like he didn't really, he wasn't, he wasn't, he was kind of like, yeah. No. I, I don't think he was turned on by it. No, it didn't yeah. turn him on. It wasn't the negativity, it was <laughs> the nudity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we, more more negativity about naked scope. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's fair. I think that's why Larry Page was sad. He was a sad man. <laughs> he made him sad. Yeah. Did you see this uh, Twitter account, by the way, Leo? No. At, uh, sad Larry Page oh, on Twitter. Oh, I've got to subscribe. It's pretty good, the, actually. The world is making me sad, says yep. Larry. 
Just yeah. can't we all just get along? He's really not the Rodney King. But at the same time, as he's saying that, I really do feel like uh, the things that Google showed are in many ways mind boggling. I think a hot word search is phenomenal. Um, I think what they're doing with photos is exact, is solving a problem that really exists. So many times, times tech companies solve problems that don't exist. But what do you think? <laughs> oh man! I, I Once think, in a I while, think, I think, I, th I, think the, I think the photo stuff they're doing is like stuff that loads of other companies could have done, but didn't. And thought, actually, you know what? We're not going to do that because that's actually crossing the line. That's that's ah. creepy. Yeah, it was a little creepy. Oh, gee, I don't see. See, I, I think I, I, I. What do you mean creepy? Because they're I looking at your pictures. Yeah. And, and like they're picking. No, no your human best is looking at your pictures, or are they? Oh, Who's picking your best shot? It's you an know, it's, it's like, algorithmic, isn't it? it, it yeah, it, yeah, it's algorithmic. It, it's going to be looking for things like focus. And yeah, it's a like machine. That. I mean, but it's like it's it's it's. I think it's going a little bit too far. Yeah. I, I I think technically lots of companies could have done this. You know, I'm sure Facebook could do it. I'm sure Microsoft could do it. Um, Facebook is one company that doesn't worry about creepy. Uh, uh, maybe I think <laughs> yeah, but, but I, you know I. I I, I think Google is always does things because it can and never thinks if it should. No, I, I agree with you on that. They're, they're famous for that. Yeah. yeah. Famous for that. I'm following sad Larry Page right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, as I was watching tweets go by about the keynote and, and watching the different live blogs, a lot of times I was like, well, they just announced something that's a lot like Xbox Live. Or now they, they just did. announced something. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, it was like I felt I yeah. felt like because a lot of the um, people who cover Google really closely don't know about a lot of the things Microsoft has done. Like right. when they announced the Spotify competitor, I'm like, yeah, it's Zoom Pass, right? Yeah, that's that's original. <laughs> well, it's Spotify as yeah, and well. Spotify, right? I mean, I know, but I, I'm not I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying, you know, like so many people were like, wow, unbelievable. It's like, ah, it's been done, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, the other one that struck me was when they were talking up a lot of um, unification of the APIs between Chrome and Android. I'm like, yep, that's what Microsoft's doing too with yeah. Windows and Windows Windows 8, Windows Phone 8, right? Yeah. That's where they go. So they're all going the same place. Yeah, well, that well, that was why I kind of was like, uh, we want to make, there's plenty of room. They want to make product, yeah. new products. It's like, or copy the existing products. We could do that exactly. too. Exactly. <laughs> not another, uh, yep. not a bad way to go. Not a bad one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know, you really feel like sometimes that um, when one becomes a billionaire mogul, one might lose touch with just a little bit with reality. Just a little Perhaps. bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they, he was, he, you know, he was really critical of Oracle. He said, well, they're, yeah. in, they're in it for the money. Right. <laughs> And they aren't. <laughs> what a thing. Horrors, capitalism. He did, did he criticize Microsoft for using Google's APIs? To yeah. Integrate? He actually, so Microsoft just turned on Google Talk in Outlook.com. It's one of the now, the messenger protocols. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, I think Larry was saying in the, you know, at, at one point, um, we're very open with our uh, messaging protocols. We want everybody to use it. Why would he be critical of Microsoft then for doing it? What didn't he like about it? The, the implication was it wasn't a reciprocal move. Oh, which it I'm wasn't. Not, right. I'm right. not sure if he meant Microsoft won't let us integrate with Skype. I, it wasn't really clear what, what he was trying to say there to me. Well, he's right in that, in that sense. Like, yeah. Yeah, Microsoft um, has a proprietary messaging system. Right, right. Uh, Skype Google. is super proprietary. Google's the old messenger was sort of proprietary, but there was documentation and you could use this XMPP protocol to talk to it, but they're getting rid of that because they're making it more proprietary thanks to the Skype purchase. I don't yeah. see the wisdom, but that's what they're doing. And Google so, Talk is XMPP. I mean, the world, so, yeah, in, a, in, a, in a great um, world, everything would be XMPP. It's, a fab, it's, a, it's an amazing well, protocol. You know, but Google is scaling back XMPP. I know. Um, so this was originally reported on The Verge, and they said that Google was just getting rid of XMPP entirely because of um, they're integrating Google Talk and Hangouts and other things. Um, all, all of their chat stuff is coming together. But we've been speaking to them, um, Ars Technica people who are 
at IO. And it's not quite as simple as they're getting rid of XMPP. So XMPP clients will still work, but you can't you won't be able to connect your XMPP servers to Google's XMPP servers. Oh. Which you used to be able to do apparently. I, mm. I, I didn't know you could do that. It's it's some server change. So clients will still work. But you know, so Google is scaling it back. Microsoft has, is going to turn it off entirely. Um, none of these companies is really moving in the direction of open and interoperable. Yeah. Hold on, a little update here. Richard Burt says on Twitter, Link 2013 introduced XMPP setup. Is that hmm. true? That sounds, that sounds plausible, but it's yep. it's it feels like a, a right hand meet left hand sort of yeah. thing. I don't think they know what they're doing. They um, so yeah, Link can do like SIP integration and XMPP, and Skype kind of can't because Skype is just awful. Hmm. Um, but Skype is what they're pushing and using as their messaging client. Right. <laughs> <laughs> People just listening missed that Dr. Pizza animation. <laughs> <laughs> was that a cat or was that you? I think it was a gun to head <laughs> animation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, oh, let's do uh, let's do um, our our weekly. What has become our weekly mm -hmm. blues clues? Yes. More news so we get, about blue. Yes, more news on blue. Yep. So uh, this week we finally get, got the official word, which we knew all along. Uh, blue is Windows 8.1. We already knew that. And we got the official confirmation, too, that blue is going to be free, um, which we suspected, but Hallelujah, we weren't totally sure. Yeah, that's a good and now, if thing. For, for existing uh, Windows 8 and Windows RT users, you're going to get blue free through the Windows Store. So that we know now. Um, and we also know for sure uh, the public preview of Blue for Intel and for ARM is going to come out June 26th at the Build Conference. So we have we have those three new pieces that we know for sure now because they're officially confirmed. I'm so, that's so good. pleased that it's going to be a free upgrade. Me too. It's really, I think, critical. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Very critical. And that's for Windows 8 and RT. Right. Yep. Yay. Yep. Yay. Yeah. And... Um, so I, I had a few new tidbits from um, one of my sources about um, some more things that might be coming for Blue. Uh, so we, we've been talking a lot on Windows Weekly about the start, uh, some kind of a start button coming to the operating system and boot to desktop being an option, boot straight to desktop. Um, but I'm also hearing now too about charms being modified a bit so they're easier to use with the mouse, which would be really Good. great. Good. Yes. Good. Uh, maybe some new built-in tutorials and in-context help to help people figure out oh, how to use really Blue. That would be really awesome, right? <laughs> yeah. And um, some, quote, adjustments to the start screen to make it easier for desktop users to use Blue. Uh, which that will be interesting to see what that is exactly. Uh, but all things that I think are nothing but goodness. Yes. I know there, yeah, there's so many people like, I, I think we talked about this last week, Gizmodo saying, Microsoft, dig your heels in. Don't bring back the start. Don't don't modify it. Just go your course. I, I, I kind of agree with them. Oh, um, you guys are nuts. They, 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 need, to, they need to be, well, don't get me wrong, there need to be improvements. The tutorial they have, for example, is totally Awful. inadequate. <laughs> It is. It, it's almost good enough if you're a touch user. It's not great, but it's it's semi useful. It's just worthless trash if you're using a mouse, and they they totally need to fix that. Um, there are there are enhancements they need to make to to the start screen. Um, we've seen some of them in the leaks, like the unified search. Uh, like the kind of just scrolling to see your old programs instead of having to do the app bar, right click, click the button, get it. Great. You know, uh, totally behind those improvements. Win8 user says something interesting in the chat room. He says, what, what if the UI just would adjust to the kind of hardware you're running on? And if you're running on a, ta a tablet, be tablet. If you're running on a desktop screen without a touch UI, let's make I, it more like I, Windows 7. I originally that thought that, that would be what they should do. Yeah. But we have the technology. I now, but I but I now think that um, touchscreen laptops are 
like the future and which is the right interface to show on a touchscreen laptop right because i think if you use touch if you use touch on your laptop yeah show them a touch but But what if you're like me what if i use both it does yeah. do that in one way. I think, when I, I am on the works. Metro uh, screen, if I launch a Metro app that needs typing, it will actually, ask, even though I have a keyboard, yeah. put a right. uh, on-screen keyboard, keyboard up. So up. it's it's trying yeah. to think about how yeah. who's using this and how in, yeah. incorrectly, but, as it turns but, out. But, it, it, but it's got to be like subtle differences. It can't yeah. be like if I think you're on a if you you know if you've got a mouse attached, I'm going to show you a start menu instead right. of the start screen. That would that yeah. would never be the right way to do it. Um, I really don't think they should bring back the start button. I think they uh, should bring a introduce a start button, but not the same start button. Wait obviously. a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. I don't think Peter, should why should they not bring back the start button? So here's the thing. You're more stubborn if, than they are. If <laughs> if metro apps are the future, and if they want people to start using metro apps in earnest then people have got to get used to the idea of there being no start button that's visible. Because Metro apps are full screen. Yeah, but are Metro apps the future? That's a terrifying well, future. You know, I, <laughs> I don't want I everything don't. to be full screen. There's, we, we, that's a step backwards. That's called it, DOS. <laughs> but, with, you know, GUI, it, with graphics. They, they may not be the sole future, you know, but if we, if the idea is that we're going to be using Metro apps, at least on a daily basis, like. And by the way, well, I hope you're saying this because you believe this is what Microsoft's thinking, not because you think this. I, I I don't think that Metro apps should be the sole part of the future, but I think they should. I could certainly see that they should be part of the future. Ugh. Ugh, Why not? Ugh, I mean, ugh. things like have you, the things like the the Metro weather app is actually it's a really nice app. Yeah, but I have um, a large screen. I do not need to take the whole screen up. Tell me what temperature it is. This it's fine on a yeah, it's, it's fine it, on an you know, iPad. It's fine what? on a tablet. Blue's gonna I, fix that, Leo. I, it's I, gonna you know, introduce. It's gonna have, let you have more apps side by side and things like yeah. that. So it, it's making changes, but they're still gonna be top to bottom, so kind of full size. Um. If if my if my, if, my if prediction they, if, they if want, Microsoft if continues people, continues down this road, they're dead meat. This is not what people want. want. If, they want if, they, if they want people to use these apps, they have to get them used to not looking for a start button on the screen. Because these apps do not have a start button on the screen. If people are still going to be looking for the start button, then there is no way that desktop or hybrid users will ever use metro apps because they will be lost every time i i i could not disagree with you more <laughs> i really it's, think it's nothing I, about even whether whether the start button is good or not if people are trained to look for the start button then every time they have a metro app they're going to be lost but I don't accept your your foundation, which is that we we have to have metro apps. Nobody's writing metro I'm apps, not, by I'm the not, way. I'm, I'm no, they not are. They we are. To. There, we saying, went from 130. If, if, what if, it was 140,000, 145,000, and a, and what? I mean, it was like it's the growth is completely tailed off, hasn't it? No, that was that was Windows Phone. You're thinking. Okay, Leo. that's Windows Phone. Okay. Uh, metro metro apps. I think we're up to seventy thousand, um, which is pretty good. Um, not great. And a lot of the, a lot of the reason they're not higher in terms of numbers is they they basically change the developer paradigm with Windows 8. And so developers who are used to .NET, some of them are kind of sitting on the fence, going, a while, you know, like moving, moving, yeah, do yeah. we want to do this? We're not ready. Yeah. And Microsoft knows they're really out there evangelizing it now and getting the developer division to really and, push this idea now. Too. And is it growing? I mean, is it growing? Uh, how is the slope? Are we? It's hard. It's hard to tell because they, they haven't really been talking about the number of apps uh, until quite recently. And uh, just recently they said 60,000. Now they're saying 70,000. See, yeah. I've every bit of research I, that I, I mean, now maybe I'm an old, old fuddy daddy. I would grant you that I probably am, but every bit of research I've ever saw said a bigger screen makes people more productive. Why? Because they can not because they can have a bigger weather app, but because they can have more windows open, multi-windows yeah. are a productivity tool. It was a major 
uh, breakthrough in technology when we went there. And I am old enough to remember when before we had that. Remember when we were DOS screens, people invented TSRs just so they could put something else on the screen. Yeah. Uh, well, windowing hey, is on. huge. Uh, windowing is fabulous. Why are we going in the other direction? Uh, Leah, Leah, Leah. What's, what's important is being able to see multiple things at the same time. Overlapping and and, windows do not make you more productive because you that's can't why see a big screen. what's behind the right. overlapping that's windows. That's why a big screen. And Metro, but Metro does non-overlapping windows. Yeah, but in very constrained ways. It has to be this big it's or over, this but, big. But, but less constrained in blue. Right, so yes. we're going to have more shapes? Well, they, I think they will still be basically tall and thin. Yeah. Um, see, I can't tell you how frustrating it is. I've got a Twitter constrained. screen, but that column has to be that column. If I wanted to make it a little yeah. bit bigger, no, can't do it. Yeah. In blue, you will be able to make it a bit bigger. Okay. You'll be able to have 50-50. You'll be able to snap apps 50-50. Okay, that's blue. an improvement. No. That's an improvement. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, back to back to start button though. Um, I, I understand your point, Peter, about like you're trying to encourage more people to develop metro apps and all that. But I think you have to remember there's 1.4 billion people who look for the start button when they use Windows, and I don't think we and should just say to them, "You have to learn this now," because it's it's scaring off well, a lot of what? people. They're, they're learning to use the iPad, and the iPad doesn't have a start button. Yeah. On screen. But Windows, Windows, just yeah. Fine. I guess if if Microsoft had made Windows 8 only work on tablets, that would have been okay. But it's supposed to be the operating system for PCs too, and so I don't think it works as well without the start button for people who are used to working that way. And uh, I think I think if it's an option, that's awesome, right? So it, you can choose to use it or not use it. And if you're like you, you'll you'll ignore it. And if you're somebody who's just learning. You use it. Maybe someday you won't need it. But I, I just hate this idea. Like, let's not let's just make everybody learn because that's just not how especially businesses work. They they don't want to retrain these people. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you were around in 1995, Mary Jo. People I was indeed. In the first place. <laughs> they can learn something new. Yep. I, 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 they can. I, I, this is why, you know, the, 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 the crappy state of the tutorial is an issue because Windows 8 does nothing to teach them. And that's right, a huge true. problem. Microsoft yeah. advertising does nothing to teach them. Very if you true. if you remember, like the first uh, like iPhone ads, they taught you how to use an iPhone. Microsoft hasn't done anything like that, so I I totally understand that there's a load of Windows 8 users who don't know how to use the damn thing because nobody has told them. Yeah. I don't and think I don't think the problem is not knowing how to use it. I think the problem is it's completely wrongheaded, and Microsoft's moving in the absolute worst possible direction. I've finally come to that conclusion. I reserve uh, judgment as long as I can, but Metro... I, 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 think, I think, Leo, you just need to use the Windows button that you've actually had for... Oh, no, I use it, and I totally it, use it. I just it don't like... Use the, use the no, one I do, your keyboard. and I, have, I, I totally do, and I know how to do that. I know how to use all of this stuff. I can find charms. I can start <laughs> the machine. I can shut the machine down. I can do all of that stuff. Uh, it's not that I don't know how to use it. It's that it really is a... Um, it is a very bad hybrid, and, it does, and I think it, it looks... It's a mule... And it is, it's not going to reproduce. It's, yep. it's, uh, it's a dead end. <laughs> I, I really, really hope they do a lot of these things we've heard rumored with blue. Um, I think that, that it they're... Help. It will help. It will help. It will help. And it will undo some of the things that they were too stubborn on. In Remains the to be seen if it will help enough, but it will help. Correct. We'll uh, agree to disagree on this one, Dr. Pete. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's good? We'll know. In five years, let's get back together again. We'll all gather around and we'll uh, we'll know how well Windows... We'll actually know very soon. We may know sooner than that, even. Hmm. And, yeah. and, you know, there's a bunch of other things they need to do. Like, they need to let desktop apps use the charms. Like, why can't I use Outlook with the share charm? It's insane. <laughs> um... So, you know, I, I'm not saying that Windows 8 is perfect, not by any stretch. It needs lots of improvements. But I don't think the idea is as, as flawed as you you seem to think, Leo. We'll find out. Okay. It's flawed for me. I, I mean, all I can really say is I, it's, I can't use it. It's unusable for me. Um, but I have to think that uh, it's a step, to me, it's a step backwards in, in, uh, in UI. Uh, and uh, you, you know, know, full screen makes a lot of sense on an iPad. I love the. I'm not saying yeah. that is not the case. I love the iPad, but I, I do believe that there's a, make, there's a place for desktop computing. My desktop well, when I'm watching Netflix. Makes, well, you, when you're wait, watching you a movie, sure. Right. But this is a, a, that's a trivial use of your computer. If you want to get any work done, Peter, you should have Windows and a desktop. 
Yeah, I do. I get lots of work done, Leo, and I I do it with with maximized windows. I think one of the problems is but that I a lot of the people who ta do this stuff are writers, and a writer only needs one full screen uh, for writing text. They can use Notepad, but if <laughs> but if you're if you're doing like more traditional productivity. You know, if you're a bookkeeper or if you're just doing something with a computer that it was more than just one full screen window, uh, it is it is it does not work. And it's a bad idea. And I, I think Microsoft is forcing something down people's throats that is in the long run going to come right back up at them. Hope um, all we'll my see. hopes are pinned on blue. We'll see. I think blue <laughs> blue is Microsoft's acknowledgement that maybe maybe we went a little too far too fast. Yes. Uh, but we'll see. You know, I, I, I completely acknowledge that I'm just an old fart, and uh, I'm probably one of those people who just says, you know, why are you changing it? Don't change it. <laughs> it was so good the way it was. Mm. Uh, you know, there's... I like, I really like the changes on my Surface RT when I use um, what they did with one app and snapping. Oh, I hate snapping. I, let's just say I hate snapping. What? That doesn't work for me at all. It just is a piece of crap to me. Um, but um, I like... I like the charms. Sure. I like things like that on, on the Surface RT. Um, I w refuse to put Windows 8 on my desktop until they fix it. It's, it's, I agree with Leo, not productive. And I got to tell you I, that most of the people who are watching this show live are in, a, in, a, in an environment where they have a, a screen <laughs> and a chat room, at least two windows, and I would guess more than yeah, that. I, I've, got them, I've got them snapped side by side, not overlapping. Yeah. Which means you have to, it's Microsoft's aspect ratio or nothing. No, it, Leo, in blue, it's not. It's any aspect. In blue, ratio. it's not. Yeah. Well. In blue, we're going to be able to do multiple snaps. So what um, do you have? Just let me ask you, Peter. So the chat room is snapped to the wide or the narrow column? No, I'm, I'm using it on the desktop, so it's their snap 50-50. Oh, okay. Like I'll be able to do in blue. Right. Yeah. Why 50-50? Why, why not? Why shouldn't, cause shouldn't I be able to make it 25-75 or 38-62? I mean, why, you, you why should, should I have, you should, why should I have to go any one way? Because you make it then less convenient. I mean, in blue, I think you probably will be able to make it pretty flexible. Um, but I just use the keyboard buttons, you know, Windows key left, Windows key right, yeah. to snap them automatically. And obviously, I don't want to have to, like, press Windows key right sort of in 10% notches or something like that, you know, which they could have done, but it would be awful. I, I, don't, I just don't understand a, a company that is making a product for consumers deciding how the consumer can use it and saying, hey, sorry. Wow. This is how so you so you, I, I, I take it you've never bought anything from Apple ever. No, and, and I have <laughs> to say uh, that one of the nice things about Apple is I have a terminal command, I have uh, Unix under the hood, and I use it that way oh, a on lot. Your, on, your, on, on an iPad? No, and I don't have it on an iPad. I don't use an iPad more than about 5% a day. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but it's good for reading. You know, it's good for certain things. Yeah. It's absolutely great for it's not good for productivity. It's good for playing games, for reading, watching movies. Um, oh, but I, I agree I, with you. I, Apple is not. I'm I'm not setting up Apple as the paradigm of of this at all. In fact, that's why I'm a little disappointed. Microsoft was the kind of alternative to the our way or highway universe, and I guess they've taken a page from Apple's playbook, which and, might be a mistake. And hopefully, undoing that very soon. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Very. With great interest, we'll watch. And it seems like eight one is starting to move a little bit more into the flexible direction. Every yes. time we talk about it, we're gonna take a break. Come back with more Mary Jo Foley, Peter Bright. We could agree to disagree. Absolutely. <laughs> That's what makes it interesting. There's no uh, right answer. We don't know. We just think we do. At least I do. <laughs> <laughs> our show today brought to you by our good friends at Citrix. They make so many great products. One of the products most recently acquired uh, that I use, now this I use every single day, is ShareFile. Uh, pr probably in business you have this issue where you want to send people content, uh, a file, a, a PowerPoint presentation perhaps, uh, a document, a design, a, a graphic. Uh, you know, this is a very common use. And uh, I've told you many times, I've been saying it for literally six or seven years don't send email attachments this has always been the way viruses get spread it's a risky thing to do and there are lots of other reasons it's not secure emails just like a postcard can it's completely you know un, unprotected as it travels the wide open internet it also there's a big issue now as our files get bigger if i send you one image from my camera it's too big for many mailboxes <laughs> they'll bounce it right back and that's just a picture so if you want to use 
a, a seamless way to do this. Uh, uh, you want to use uh, attachments. Think about sharefile.com from Citrus. This solves the problem. Instead of attaching a file, you're sending a secure link to your correspondence. Sharefile uh, gives you all sorts of flexibility as well. The secure link uh, can be set up so that it only uh, can be downloaded once or many times, or once in a week, or for a week only, or for a month only. You could password protect it. You'll see when the file's downloaded, by whom. Files of almost any size can be sent using HTTPS, so it's absolutely secure. Uh, you even have a ShareFile Sync tool that means that your ShareFile folders are available to you anywhere, which means I can, on my smartphone, send a file. Uh, even though the file's not on the phone, I can say, oh, I, you know, it often happens to me, oh, I forgot to send you that, let me send it to you now, and I open the phone. Send it along. It is secure file transfer built for business, customized for a great many businesses. In fact, if you if you, right at the top it says radio listeners, click here. There's a green little green microphone. Click that, and you'll see uh, a place that you can enter our offer code, which by the way is Windows W I N D O W S. But you'll also see a, a list of select your industry. Now you could just say other. You don't have to select any particular industry. But these are industries that ShareFile is used widely in and can be comp completely customized for, including healthcare, where you have government regulations like HIPAA that say you know it has to be secure, has to be private. This is HIPAA compliant. Uh, advertising, architecture, biotech, construction, media, legal. If you're a lawyer. You ought to know better. I get so many emails from lawyers that say, this is privileged confidential email. <laughs> if you got this by accident, delete it before reading it. Yeah, that works. No. <laughs> if you're sending privileged client information in email, you, maybe you want to check it out. Sharefile.com. You can try it free for 30 days when you use our promo code Windows. Sharefile.com. Click that green microphone at the top of the page. I think you will like it. We are talking uh, Microsoft with Peter Bright, Dr. Pizza from Ars Technica. It's great to have you. It's getting dark in Londinium. So, yeah, uh, yes. yeah, yeah. What? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Mary Jo Foley is here. She is in New York, New York. And uh, we, uh, of course, the uh, uh, Microsoft uh, reporter for uh, ZDNet, all about Microsoft.com is her URL. Let me see what else uh, on our on our notes here we uh, we want to cover. Um, Microsoft Summer Show Madness. Well, Build is coming. Yeah. Xbox, the reveal for Xbox. This is a crazy. We got Google I/O. We got WWDC in a couple of weeks. We got the Xbox launch. We then we got Build. So let's start with the uh, next week. Yeah, next week is the Xbox, Leo. In a big May tent. In a big in a tent. Big Tent. Is that You're true? Gonna check that out. Yeah, they even have a Twitter account too. Xbox Reveal Tent on Twitter. They have their own account for that's, the tent. Now we're talking. <laughs> now this is now bad marketing. The Xbox Reveal <laughs> Tent. Oh, there's a picture of it. There's a picture. It is a tent. Yep. It says we Peter are ready. Remembers, yeah, there was a tent for build and it was pouring yeah. rain during build yeah. last year and the tent was leaking. So hopefully they're going to have better weather this year. <laughs> and that's on the Microsoft campus? Mm-hmm. Wow. Is. Yeah. I don't know. There's, you know what? This week was so quiet on Xbox leaks. Um, no, there wasn't really anything much this week. Was there, Peter? Did you catch anything no, I, new? I, I didn't catch anything. No. No. Oh, so it's. Uh, They're good. Yeah, they, next, they got a lid on it. They put a lid on they it. They got oh. a lid on it. Oh, I know. Oh, 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 yeah. oh. It means that everything about it has now leaked. Oh, we already know everything. Yeah, so we know it'll be uh, x86 <laughs> AMD based. It will apparently have Blu-ray capability. That's good news. Yep. Um, that will not play older games, right? But it will play the new games. Yes, is that right? We know that yet. I, I don't know that we know that. I would expect so. But. Well, it, unlike PlayStation, at least Microsoft's been x86 all along. Except for the no? Xbox 360. Oh, that's right. They're Power PC. <laughs> They're Power PC. They're Power yeah. PC. Yeah. yeah, so that's why. Oh, it would be never mind. In yeah. fact, that's right. I completely forgot their power PC. So this is yeah. going to be a big jump to uh, x86. Right. the the uh, The rumor is under uh, underneath it's it's Windows 8 inside of the Xbox. Ah! I oh, know. Don't be <laughs> no, afraid. no. Actually, Don't that's be... what should be. You always <laughs> want to play a game full screen. All games should be full screen. <laughs> no, just teasing. Um, no, that makes sense. In fact, going way back to. Uh, 
uh, gosh, what was my uh, the Sega Dreamcast was a Windows CE Windows CE platform. Yeah. So this is nothing new. <laughs> I think it'll be a little more successful than the Dreamcast. I, hey, <laughs> okay, we could fight over Metro, but do not diss my Dreamcast. <laughs> Greatest game machine of all time, Sega. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 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 if I, I foolishly, when my kids, uh, we got, when we got, I think it's when we got the first Xbox, uh, we gave away the Dreamcast to some poor kid who couldn't afford an Xbox. Jesus, you must have really hated that kid. Ever, ever since, Henry and I have both been saying, if we could only get that Dreamcast back, <laughs> if we could only get that back. And play so many great Dreamcast <laughs> games. <laughs> Sega, Sonic, it's just, it's a Sonic the Hedgehog box. Just think of it that way. Isn't, isn't Sonic on Nintendo now? It is now. You can, I can play Sonic on my iPad now, so there's really... Is no, it not the same? Does it not count? It should count, because it's probably a 20 times faster processor, better graphics. In every respect, it's better. <laughs> so we know everything. You think that's the case, Peter? There won't be any surprise? What would be a... Well, we know it's not... Uh, doesn't require an always-on internet connection. We know that much. They've, they've uh, been very clear about that. Yeah. I, well, you know, I think it will require mostly on. Mostly on. It's a yeah. new a new kind of yeah. always on. You know, I, I think it's designed for a world where people have internet connections. Yeah. So, you know, down, downloading updates in the background, maybe some kind of Steam-like activation system. Right. Let's but be, let's be clear goes, about this. If your internet goes down, you'll still be able to play single-player games. That's, I don't think the, the bitching about always on really has anything to do with that. It's more about DRM and people just don't want it to be phoning home. Yeah, I don't think they've really seen consoles for the last 30 years if they think that right. they're going to be successful bitching about DRM. Yeah, welcome. Because DRM is kind of the console thing. We did have a bad experience on the desk, on the PC with uh, SimCity. Uh, and that was yeah. a case where it's a single player yeah. game, but it had to, it always wanted to check home. And yeah, ne never never mind. Sad Larry Page, you're gonna get sad. Dr. Pizza, <laughs> perhaps in sad <laughs> Dr. Pizza, Sim City For broke my goddamn heart. <laughs> forget, I was forget the negativity. So looking forward to Sim City, Sim and City. <laughs> I just, I know, it's, I know. It, it is sadness in game form. So Diablo yeah. three was like that too. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, so we're used and, in the desktop yeah. world. It's kind of not unusual. No, it, it's been done before. Yeah. And one of the things uh, Sony's been touting with PlayStation Four is background updating, because that's one of the, the worst yeah. things on the PlayStation is you turn it on the and you can't use it. Free. Yeah, you can't use it. It's like, well, yeah. come back in two hours because I got to yeah, download it. Update. Updating. Yeah. I want to play and, now. You know that, that that's the kind of thing that Always On is good for. You know, if it right. can assume that there's internet right. and it can keep itself up to date, so you don't have to wait for it. Right makes good sense and right. that's that's actually really good for 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 people who play games so let's host um, let's hope it's mostly on yeah i think that's, that's exactly I think. right i think i think you know and if, if your they, internet goes down your game will still work single right, player but right. it's going to expect internet right and that's fine uh tech ed 2013 is is also the first i forgot that left that out so i didn't i thought they'd merged WinHack and TechEd and all this stuff into build. It's not so they have a separate yeah. TechEd. Yeah, TechEd's separate. Tech That's separate. Yeah, TechEd stayed separate pretty much. Um, uh, so that's more for like the IT pro crowd. TechEd ah, is. I see. Um, they and, don't want to uh, mix. They don't want to mix developers with the IT no. pro crowd. I'm, although there there are developer tracks at TechEd too. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm betting TechEd's where we probably will hear something about Windows Server Blue. Um, if there is a system center, blue and uh, SQL Server, blue, maybe we'll hear about those there. I would think. Makes sense. And we're doing a tweet up there, Leah. It was yep. weekly tweet up. Oh yay! Yep, June third. If anybody out there is going to Tech Ed, June third, Avenue Pub in New Orleans. We're, we'll be there six to eight p.m. Bring Windows your weekly. Bring your Tweety. Bring your Tweeties. <laughs> <laughs> and New Orleans is such a great town. It is. Yeah. It Love New Orleans. That is every concert, every conference rather should be in New Orleans. <laughs> New Orleans it's gonna is going to be hot. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah. We are getting into that time of year, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. June 3rd, uh, wait, say again where it's going to be? June 3rd, the Avenue Pub. Avenue uh, which Pub. Is Monday night, 6 to 8. Six to we'll eight. tweet about it. Paul and I will be tweeting about okay, it. Okay, so follow Paul Therott and Mary Jo Therott. He's at Therott. She's at Mary Jo Foley, right? Yep. yep. Great. 
uh, Tech Ed, and then E3. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, changed. Microsoft's been hinting. Uh, that's where they'll talk about the games and and uh, services for the next Xbox. Probably will be E3, oh, which wait. is this is going to be the biggest E3 in um, in a couple last few years, I think, because of the oh, PlayStation so they're gonna, Four. There, they're not going to be talking about that next week. Was it'll be just I think the hardware next week's week? more the hardware. I think so. Ah, yeah, that makes sense. Con I guess because E3, they'll let people maybe touch. E3 is a content like, show, too. Touch. That's where all the new games are announced, and there's a lot of game trailers. Yeah. and It really has yeah. become, in many ways, a, uh, a content show more than anything else. Yeah. Then Build is June... So that's E3 is the week of June 11th. Build is the week of June 26th. Yeah. And build we know Blogger that's Bash? Uh, yeah, we're going to do one. We just haven't nailed down the day and the time okay. yet. Good. Uh, and that's where everybody's going to get the public preview of Blue... Yeah. Uh, I think that's might be where we hear about more of the features, if there are any more features in the next Windows Phone update called GDR2. And a lot of people are speculating sense. Xbox SDK. I don't know. I don't know. That might that might be a good time for that. Mm -hmm. We'll see. So, yeah, that'll be busy. And then right after that, uh, if for anybody going, Houston, uh, Dr. Pizza might be there by then. July, mid-July. Um, that's the Microsoft Partner Conference. And, you know, every year at the Partner Conference, they usually talk about their retail stuff. So maybe we'll hear more about more Microsoft stores or what they're doing uh, in Best Buy and Staples for retail around Windows 8 and Windows Blue. I don't know. That seems like that would be good timing for that. Yeah. Wow. And you're yeah, going to go to all get of these. <laughs> I'm not going to E3, and I'm not going to the uh, Xbox reveal. Oh, okay. All right. You don't care about that. That's right. Nah. Are you going worry. to the Xbox one? Um, we'll cover it. We'll, I'll be yeah. here, and we'll cover it live. And I'm hoping they'll live stream it. I think they probably will. So we can do our usual coverage, and we'll get a bunch of gamers so I don't sound so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's so funny because well, I, well, I, I play I games. I love games. games. I love games. But for some reason, I am. Uh, I guess people who are serious gamers don't say you know you're not a gamer yeah so. yeah I, th I think you're a little old for serious uh, no gamer. Cred. hey <laughs> Gosh, no, darn you, it dude you've got to be you've got to be some teenager in a basement somewhere like calling <laughs> abuse of people on xbox live that's that is the true oh, face right. of the although you mean like most gamers <laughs> yeah most gamers are 35 yeah. to 45 year old men but okay <laughs> but still calling abuse yeah, yeah. The, the abuse is the important bit yeah it's, it's not that we're not getting beaten up by those teenagers, but we play. <laughs> we can, we you know, play. I, I, it's funny. I don't really care about any of the Xbox gaming stuff. It's all the stuff it will do that's not gaming. That the media I'm stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the media stuff. Because yeah. um, it's going to have this HDMI input. So you can hook it up to your cable box or your satellite box or whatever and like pass through video and ah. do stuff. And I, I, you know, because I think Microsoft has kind of given up on... Um, IPTV being the future anytime soon. You know, let's take over to Media Room. Yeah. And so it'll t be able to talk to your cable box and, and maybe... I, I would love if it acted like a DVR and did all that kind of thing as well. Um, but I don't know at all what they're planning to do. You know, Google... Uh, that was something Google TV great. did, which I thought was really better than having... Every... You know, normally everything has, you know, its own HDMI input, and you have to have, you right. know, a switcher, an AV receiver just to, to manage all of this. And the Google TV made it, it was just a pass-through, which means then you could do overlays yep. on live TV. Yep. It, there's some yep. really good things you can do that way. And I don't know why more people don't do that. Um, but I would love to see that with an Xbox. That'd be a great yep. way to do it. Give you, it could give you a... Uh, a Twitter window or a, uh, you know, I mean, that would be great. Right. You know, it, there, are, there are lots of things that it could do. Yeah. Um, so that, that's the bit that, that I find interesting, yeah. um, much more than the gaming. Because if, if, if I'm playing games, I'm going to play games properly on my PC. <laughs> With Steam, the way God intended it. <laughs> Suck it, console fanboys. <laughs> <laughs> He said it. I didn't say it. No. Actually, I kind of, I kind of agree with you. I bought, um, I bought Bioshock Infinite for the PC and for the PS4, and I just can't PS4. play it on the PS4. Wow. I mean PS3. 
Shh, don't tell anybody I said that. <laughs> and uh, I think that's and the eighth you just blown there. I you? can't play it with a with a so it's so much easier with a keyboard and mouse. Mouse and keyboard, Uber Alice. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's how God intended it to be played. It is. Yeah, it is. It's PC gaming master race. <laughs> So, so, yeah, we're going to get the hate mail. And Mary Jo, we're going to lose completely. So, Layla. I'm like ready to doze off. <laughs> we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be excited about the next Xbox because of the uh, Windows 8 underpinnings. That's what I'm really interested in, actually. Hadoop. Yeah. I'm, yep. It's got <laughs> Hadoop. Hadoop it in because no, uh, Hadoop. <laughs> there's nothing like big data and gaming. <laughs> That's right. They They're, go together. Well, you know what's funny, Leo? I think you remember uh, Xbox Live does use Hadoop when they're doing some of their gaming See? See? work. See? Yeah. Distributed file systems rule, man! <laughs> <laughs> I may not be a gamer, but I'm a Hadooper. No. I can I'm tell. Hadooper. Hadoop Weekly. You should, a, you should <laughs> see a doctor for that. It's, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh... <laughs> Let's see. Do you want it? Let's see. Uh, I don't think we have time to take chat room questions. I'm sorry to okay. say. So Thanks we'll uh, we'll move on to. Uh, we've got. Uh, do, do you want to do a software pick of the week? I can't, can't believe what you picked, Doctor Pizza. You are an evil, evil man. But well, you know, we'll it, get it to that. A... Don't say anything. Okay. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're gonna do an ad. Uh, maybe we'll do a software tip of the week. We do have enterprise rumor of the week. That's a new feature. I like that. And of course, the best beer you've ever had. <laughs> with the weirdest name I've ever heard. Our show today brought to you by our friends at audible.com, the audio bookstore uh, that I, I just want to live in. 100,000 plus titles now. Excuse me. Read by some of the best people, uh, you know, actors. They bring in Broadway actors. People can bring a book to life. Uh, some of the auto, Audible books are actually performances, which makes it even more in, intriguing. It's just, if you're in the car, if you're stuck in the car driving... Uh, to work or you you know there's also at the gym there's nothing more boring than an hour on the stairmaster unless you're listening to an amazing book did you see that this is going to be an hbo uh, show beyond the candelabra blowing the lid scott thorson's book that blows the lid off liberace oh but mm -hmm. i really before i see the hbo movie i would like to actually read this i can only imagine my my life with liberace Okay, baby. Now it can be told. Dan Brown's new one is out. Inferno. Did you read uh, the uh, Da Vinci Code? Angels and Demons. Uh, this is the fourth in the uh, Robert Langdon series. They have a, Paul Michael's a great narrator. Really brings these books to life. They're really thrilling. And I think you could argue that uh, that actually uh, the Da Vinci Code was the weakest of the four. It's just been getting better and better and better. So. If you're a Dan Brown fan, this is exciting. Just came out. Did you like The Kite Runner? What a great book that was. Beautiful book. Uh, Khalid Hosseini's newest six years since uh, The Kite Runner is uh, coming out next week. It's coming out actually the same day that the Xbox, uh, the new Xbox is announced, the Infinity. So there's something going on there. Maybe it's a, maybe there's a tie-in. I don't know. It's called In the Mountains Echoed. Um... The early reviews are very, very good. This would be a great new novel to listen to if you liked The Kite Runner. Um, all of this available. This is one of the things I like about Audible. They isn't, we're not just talking old stuff. There's old stuff. There's new stuff. There's classics. There's science fiction. There's mystery. There's thrillers. Of course, lots of history and biography. Uh, for commencement, if you're right, if you if you have to give a commencement speech, <laughs> they, they have a little section here. Ten and a half things no commencement speaker has ever said by Charles Whelan. <laughs> if this isn't nice, what is? Kurt Vonnegut's advice for the young. Uh, Dr. Seuss's Oh, the Places You Go, narrated by John Lithgow. Now, that's a good gift for a grad. You can get your first book free right now. Go to audible.com uh, slash windows. Audible.com slash windows. You'll be signing up for the gold account. That's a book a month. But your first month's free and uh, your first credit's free. You can pick any one of the books I just mentioned or many of the other 100,000 other titles and uh, cancel in the first 30 days. You'll pay nothing, but the book is yours forever. World War Z, want to see that before the movie comes out? That might be another good choice. Audible.com slash Windows. I tell you, I, I don't get in the car without my Audible. And if I do, I, I turn back. 
I said, I get my, in fact, the first thing I did when I got the, when, when the 928, well, of course, I put Audible on it immediately. The Audible app, it's great on Windows uh, phone. There's a Metro app too. Audible.com slash Windows. We thank them for their support of Windows Weekly. Peter Bright is here from Ars Technica. Mary Jo Foley, as always. I guess Paul is in uh, Redmond or on his way to Redmond. Yep, he is. Mm, meetings? Or is he being meetings. hired? Meetings. <laughs> <laughs> meetings. Are these the same meetings you took a little while ago? No, I, I'm not allowed to go to certain meetings. Oh, they don't, they That's know, okay. they know you are, you have the best sources. They know you, <laughs> they're not going to give you any help. Dr. Pizza will uh, fill in for Paul, though, this week with his uh, software pick of the week. Seriously, Dr. Pizza? What is so, your... you know, we have talked about it already, but it is the YouTube app for Windows Phone. What? It's still it's available? A, it's, well, I, that's a... I've got it on my phone. They haven't deleted it. So what? So, that's puzzling because I thought that the thing was that they they, they they have until the twenty second to remove it. So now's the time to get it. it. It was there when I looked earlier. Let me look. It, I'm looking right now. Yep. You could be right. They could have. They could have deleted nope, it. No, it's not. It's still there by Microsoft Corporation. Microsoft I'm installing Corporation. it. Yep. Still there. There's one by not um, some other person, but get the one yeah, by Microsoft Corporation. I know, that's, yeah. Yeah. It's good awesome. Bad, <laughs> um, you know, you, you it it does. Basically everything I want from a YouTube app. Um, I can see YouTube comments. YouTube comments always enlightening, always enrich you as a person to read YouTube comments. <laughs> I, I highly recommend it. I, I, th I think you're really going wrong if you don't read them. Peter, uh, can I ask you a question? What's a wanker, and why do they keep calling me one? Never mind. Never mind. Forget I said that. I'm, I'm not allowed to say. It. <laughs> you need to remind they me. They keep calling me a wanker. So I, I don't. Explain. Why? Why, Peter? Why? You, you're in love with yourself, Leo. That's, that's, <laughs> that's a good answer. That way. Good answer. <laughs> I love it. So I've downloaded this. Is, this is actually you know, a good it, recommendation. It's a nice app. You can sign in with your Google account. It um, has a live it, tile. It's. It, it may do. I haven't pinned it. It says it does. It's, yeah, it's a, it that's says awesome. it does. That's awesome. Um, you know, it's got your playlists and all the sort of basic YouTube stuff is all in there. And it looks pretty nice. Um, it works, uh, you know. It and there's no ads. It, it's it's fairly fully free to YouTube, which we didn't have before on Windows Phone. So yeah, nice app. And and the fact Jeez. that Leo, please, Jesus, oh my God, I don't, I don't know what to help me, help me. I thought you were going on here. Well, this is, you're so Got that? I, I, I'm actually turning away. Oh my God, Leo. <laughs> and 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 people were okay. concerned that I would lower the tone of the show, and then you, then you put those rude words fault. on the screen. I, but there oh. were no ads, no pre-roll. No, too. Yeah. no, we didn't need ads. We had film. Wow. <laughs> wow, I didn't even know that was on YouTube. That's on YouTube, but not only it's not just on YouTube; it's recommended. Oh. oh. I Bloody just. Google. This is Google's. <laughs> it's Google's. Uh, this is Google's, Google's response to Microsoft. I yeah. promise you. Wow. Um, but yeah, it's it's a nice app. It it works really well. Um, <laughs> it it's, it it looks very similar to yeah. the official it's, apps. It's on, really uh, it's beautiful on other platforms. It, but now, it's, if it's if if uh, would Microsoft can Microsoft kill it remotely, or if if you've downloaded it, are you safe? I. I <sighs> I think technically they can kill it. I would be quite surprised if they did because yeah. the cease and desist, I think, just says stop distributing it. So get, um, so really, I mean, I'm, I'm serious. You should really get it. So, um, yeah, really get it. Nah. Download it. Because we don't know how this is going to get resolved. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, grab it while you can. And uh, somebody saying in the chat room that if, if they do discontinue it, there's a program called MetroTube, which is... Uh... Yeah, there, there are there were other other apps, um, I think, that cost money. Um, and they could be really good apps. I have to say I haven't used them because right. this one solves all my YouTube problems. Fills my YouTube needs. Yeah. It gives, gives me YouTube filth on my, on my <laughs> Windows phone. And as you so... <laughs> Demonstrated. <laughs> and all the comments um, in a yeah, beautiful metro comments. style. <laughs> yeah, re, re, they, they, it makes them even better because, yeah, you know, yeah. YouTube comments are normally good. Yeah. They're very intelligent. They're 
Mm. Insightful, witty. Uh, hey, here's one. He got paid six thousand dollars working poor. on his laptop this month. And if you think that's cool, my divorced friend has twin toddlers and made over nine thousand dollars her first month. It feels so good making so much money. I'm I'm going to do this, women. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is what I need—a second job. You, you, you are being enriched as a person as we speak. From, Thank you, from Microsoft. Reading YouTube comments. Damn this you, is, YouTube. Mm. Thank you, Microsoft. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, I like it. It's a good, <laughs> good pick. Thank you, Peter. Do you want to do a tip of any kind? Uh, help me, yeah, please. Da da download it before they kill it. That's the tip. There's the tip. <laughs> it's, it's a tip as well. It's now or never. Mary Jo Foley. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did. I downloaded it right away. Thank you. That was a very valuable tip, Peter Bright. ArsTechnica.com. Mary Jo Foley has our enterprise pick of the week. Yes. And, you know, for all the talk of how Larry Page was sad, feeling sad this week, um, Jeff Bezos is not feeling sad. He's not. Amazon and Microsoft actually work together on a product for, that's my enterprise pick of the week called SCOM Management Pack. Well, well, well. SCOM, System Center Operations Manager. Management pack. See, we can just get along. We can. We can all be friends and live in a perfect planet. <laughs> Actually, you'd think Microsoft and Amazon uh, were kind of natural uh, competitors. Yeah, they definitely are. And this is this is why this is super interesting because what this product does is it lets you uh, run Microsoft workloads on AWS and manage these from a single pane of glass inside of Microsoft's Operation Manager console. So it's like you, if you are somebody who is running Microsoft on your AWS console, I mean, on, on, your, on the AWS cloud, you can use Microsoft's management tool to monitor it. Mm. So that's kind of crazy, but yeah. it's it's something that enterprise customers wanted, some from Microsoft who are using Amazon, and it lets you uh, monitor EC2 instances on Windows and Linux, uh, the Elastic Block Store volumes, Elastic Load Balancing, Cloud Formation Stacks, and a lot of other things. And you can download it from Amazon's uh, site. So it's it's an example that, yes, we can all get along. SCOM Management Pack. Very nice. By the yes. way, Peter just put me over the top. I didn't know this on Windows Phone 8, but that YouTube download that you suggested apparently put enough applications on my ah, Windows yeah. phone that it started finally giving me some organizational tools. Because this yeah. was one thing I didn't like. I mean, it's, is it's, when always, you, it's always alphabetical, but yeah, now you've got the quick jump list. Thing. Yeah, uh, they put, so it starts, letter, it puts letters, the and then if you tap the letter, you get all the letters. Yeah, so yeah. I could jump right to YouTube. I, I was hoping something like that would happen because <laughs> it really, this is a very long list. And yeah, I guess there, when it gets... Some, there's some threshold of 20-something apps, I think, yeah. something like that. Um, when it gets to some... It, Thresh okay, that's nice. I was, so, I, was so, I was so confused the first time I had enough apps that it did it, but... Well, that YouTube app? Put me over the top. Nice. Over the Thank you. So there, there's a tip. Download yeah. 20 more apps. Yeah. Uh, let's our uh, enterprise pick of the week. How about our rumor? Something new of the week. Yeah, something new and not something good. A uh -oh. bad rumor of the week. Great. Um, so a lot of people have been predicting Microsoft was going to add VPN support back into Windows Phone 8 this year as part of one of these GDR updates, maybe GDR2, GDR3. Uh, I've been asking around about this, and it sounds like no VPN for Windows Phone 8 in 2013. And no guarantee it's coming in 2014 either with Windows Phone Blue. So I know there are a lot of uh, business customers who say, I really like Windows Phone, but they really need to put the VPN in there and just not hearing anything positive about that right now, guys. Uh, Do so, you have to uh, use PPTP? Is that what the solution is? Uh, does yeah, it support what that? They, they, they have a different solution that they recommend, um, but it's not adequate for what uh, yeah. a lot of enterprises PPTP are doing. PPTP is, is, is uh, insecure, fundamentally insecure. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I'll give you a good news rumor of the week, too, to kind of counterbalance that. A uh, rumor, uh, second rumor is uh, the Nokia EOS phone, the one with the 44 megapixel camera, yeah. could, could be out this summer. Um, so there's a positive to balance the negative there. <laughs> that's, that's great. That's great. Yeah, that would be yeah. really good. I'm excited. I don't know anything about carrier uh, in the U.S. or anything like that. Price, I don't know. This, um, is, but the, just, this is the full pure view uh, the experience real now, pure 41 view, megapixel yeah. pure view. Yeah. Right. I played with the 808 a little bit, uh, and it's it's kind of an, but it was bulky, you know, it wasn't what yeah. you would want for a phone. 
Yeah. So we'll see with how that EOS phone looks. Yeah. 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 And finally, you can't do a Windows Weekly, and I'm sure you'll be relieved to hear this, Mr. Dr. Pizza, Mr. Pizza, that's another guy, <laughs> Dr. Pizza, without a beer ad, uh, beer recommendation <laughs> from, the, from the beer advocate herself, Mary Jo Foley. Yes. Yeah. So um, in honor of the 3%, three percenters, us Windows Phone users, I decided to pick a beer that has three in it. So I picked the Three Floyds Gumball Head <laughs> as my beer pick of the week. Now, tell so me it's Floyd, not made from gumballs. It's not made from gumballs. Okay. Um, Three Floyds is based in Munster, Indiana. All right. So they're an all-American craft beer brewer, which is good because it's American craft beer this week. This week, oh. And it's a pale wheat beer. Um, it's it's supposed to be very, very um, interesting, though. Kind of, kind of almost like IPA meets a pale wheat, um, a weird combination of two things. Uh, but it's named after some comic book character. Uh, the gumball head. Yeah, uh, I never heard of him, but you know. Now, comic book cat created by Rob Sires uh -huh. uh, is gumball head. Yeah, so yeah, uh, I just had to do something with threes though. After we had such a great, uh, we're number three now moment this week for Windows Phone. I'm a big uh, wheat beer fan, so I will be trying. Me too. This. Yeah. Yep. I, I got a recommendation as well, actually. Oh, dear. It's called, yes. It's called, it's called the Pina Colada with an umbrella. <laughs> hey, if you like pina coladas, getting <laughs> drunk in the rain. <laughs> Is that your drink, really? You don't go into, you know, a bar, a gentleman's club in London, yeah, yeah, and you say, hey, mate, you got a pina colada? No. Funnily enough, Leo, no. <laughs> I, I, I don't. You go into, you know, you go into your uh, local and you say, "Hey, I'll have a pina colada, please." I'll have a pina colada, yeah. a pina colada. <laughs> shaken, not but, stirred. But, you know, out, out of a um, out of a pineapple. You've got to That's a the only way to have it. That's the the only way to have it. Peter Bright, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for being here. He's been here so long. The sun has set. It is full <laughs> night here in beautiful Londinium. Uh, your cat, in fact, has already gone out. Is on the prowl. We, what is? What is yeah, your? She's, she's is she black? She's a fully black cat. Looks beautiful. No, no, no. She no? she is a tabby. But oh, her tail is. But her tail is. That's all we've seen is her tail. Yummy. Yeah. Can we see her? Oh yeah. There, I see the tabby. Now. Oh, look at her. She, she sits on she, a newspaper right. next to you. No, she has a little. It's it's a it's a cushion with a, a newspaper design. Ah, looks so, like all the stories are about hand. cats. They are all about cats. <laughs> <laughs> Naughty Mildred on Twitter. This is Naughty Mildred on Twitter. Oh, Naughty. Hello, Naughty Mildred. She was quite nice, quite good, actually. She's a good cat. She's yeah. a good cat. Oh, well, I'm glad to, <laughs> that while, you're, uh, while your honey is in Houston, you at least have somebody to keep you company on those yes. long, cold English nights. <laughs> yeah. More damp. We had it in the summer. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so summer's here. Yeah, uh, hey, thank cold. you, Peter. Yeah. Really good to have you. Thank you, of course, Mary Jo thank Foley. You. Couldn't do the show without you. All about Microsoft.com. If anybody has the scoop, Mary Jo has the scoop. She knows what's going on. Uh, we do this show every uh, Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific. That's 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. Uh, every uh, Tuesday, uh, what did I say? Every Thursday. But if you can't be here, and I do like it if you're here. We, 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 we have fun with the chat room. Sometimes we even let the chat room ask questions. <laughs> Sometimes. What does Kitty think about Windows 8? <laughs> <laughs> it, it is I heard paw she wants friendly. The start it is designed button. for paw. Paw friendly. She likes the she paw. She wants the start button back. <laughs> <laughs> start button! Start button! Uh, yeah. You can get on-demand versions, audio and video, after the fact, twit.tv slash windows, and of course, wherever finer podcasts are aggregated, stored, and delivered to you fresh each day. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. <laughs> <laughs>